Hi, I'm Warren Sprouse. This is the Bible Forum. We're here every Sunday night from 8 until 10 p.m. Eastern. We do it all for you. We just try to educate and inform, give you information maybe you don't get anywhere else. Quo vadis, America. Do you know what the, word, the phrase quo vadis means? It means where are you going? Let me tell you a story about a young Muslim couple in Pakistan. A Christian missionary went over to Pakistan, ran in to a young fellow by the name of Alan. I'm sorry, I take that back. Alan is the missionary. Ran into this, this uh, Pakistani guy and his wife, who were Christians, the real kind. And these folks were eager to share their testimony. What they said was that it all started when they were given a New Testament and they began to actually read it. They knew about Jesus through the Quran because he's regarded as a prophet in Islam, but they didn't know much about him. And they said the concepts of Christ's love, his mercy and forgiveness, they used the words mind-blowing, heart-shaking. You see, there is no mercy in Islam. Allah is the master. The adherents to Islam are his servants. They have no idea what he really wants, just they submit themselves to him, whatever that is. It's a master-slave relationship. It's what the word Islam means. And they decided in the process of this to follow Christ, but Coming out of a Muslim family, they live in an extended family environment, still living with the man's parents, with his siblings and uh, their own children uh, in this one building, property, whatever it is. So you have this multi-generational living and compound living, and uh, now two of these people are Christians. He said they would huddle together at night behind their closed bedroom door to read the scriptures together. The missionary asked, how can we be praying for you in the weeks to come? And they said, we want to learn how to share our faith with our family and our friends, even though we know we could be ostracized or persecuted. Really, we just want to learn how to, to do that. Well, a few days after the missionary returned home from his travels, he got an email from the national director in Pakistan. The recently baptized young man had been attacked by his own family. Apparently, the extended family was constructing a new home. There are walls and ceiling on the first floor, so they, be they began to work on the second floor, but it's fairly open on the second floor. He was helping the other men in the family. They were just having some conversation during a lull, a little break, or some things that were going on. And the discussion turned to spiritual matters. So he was sharing his new faith with these family members. He explained to them how he was now a baptized Christian. Upon hearing those words, they rushed him and started to beat him. There were so many, they surrounded him. He couldn't escape. But there was a stairway leading up to the second floor, so that's how he thought he would get out, and he ran up. But they went after him, and they picked him up. They were going to kill him, and they threw him off the building. But according to him, providentially, he landed in a pile of sand that was being used to mix cement. So he only broke a, a couple bones in his arm. And because he was now on the ground, and they were on the second floor, he was able to run and escape. Go back to the compound where they'd been living, get his wife and children, and flee for their lives. And so now they're in a safe house, and their two young kids are, are there with them, a safe house running run by the mission board. What does all that mean when you talk about Quo Vadis, America? Well, 20 years ago, evangelical philosopher, pastor, Francis Schaeffer, warned that America's turning from God and embracing relative truths could have no other result but to convert America into a dictatorship within a generation or so. Quo Vadis is a narrative 
in the time of Nero, an historical novel written by a Polish man. In Latin, it means, where are you going? Where are you going, America? The movie alludes to an apocryphal act uh, of Peter in the city of Rome under the rule of emperor about 64 AD. Peter's fleeing Rome and on his way he meets Jesus and he asks him why he's going to Rome. And Jesus says, I'm going back to be crucified again, which is heresy. Uh, but it, for the movie, it makes Peter go back to Rome and to accept the martyrdom that the, the books, the history books tell us he suffered. The novel, Quo Vadis, tells of a love that develops between a young Christian woman, uh, Lygia, and Marcus Vicinius, the Roman patrician. So the question is, Quo Vadis, Domini, where are you going, Lord? And my question is, where are you going, America? A free society depends on voluntary compliance with law. Christians comply because they believe in a God who watches our every move and holds us accountable even when government does not. Christians comply because their scriptures require them to declare a definitive declarative sentence. Obey those that have the rule over you. But those without belief in God, without belief in absolute truth, have no motivation like that. And they may comply, they may not. And so there is an ever-increasing body of law that is imposed, created, imposed upon us as a society by a government that wants to achieve order. In so doing, the government separates itself from morality and oftentimes can become the chief lawbreaker. And the tragedy is the church is so desperately slow to recognize when this happens. Despite the decay of the very wall that protects them, she repeats over and over again, this is America. It can't happen here. But this is the same game that was being played out in Rome in 64 AD. It's just a different century. It was French President Francois Holland who called the shootings in his beloved France a terrorist attack. He said the terrorist attack that struck Munich killing many people is a disgusting act that aims at to foment fear in Germany after other European countries. And of course he's right. That's the definition of terror and terrorism. What an upside down world we live in when France is the first to call it as it is. To realize that over a long period of time we are gradually moving away from calling it what it is at all by anybody. But what we've learned from this incident is that it's yet another example of what happens in a country that has strict gun control. France has the strictest, if not close to it. But it's only for the working citizen, only for law-abiding citizens. Can it happen here in America? It already has. Since the early 1960s, America has undergone a series of radical cultural changes. We experienced the civil rights movement, made great strides in overturning the history of racism in this country. Spurred on by that and the flower of child revolution, which rejected the established order and sought its own brand of freedom, Americans began to imagine they had all sorts of rights and commenced a decades-long battle to obtain them, oftentimes warping the very fabric of the Constitution in order to make it happen. At the same time, America began its rejection of God and launched into a new hedonism. We began new discrimination by giving preferential treatment in public life to a plethora of groups, at the same time excluding others. We began and failed in a crusade to eliminate poverty by spending money. 
Schools began operating a, as psycho centers where personality would be shaped rather than minds educated. We need to note that that actually began in 1930s. It just simply became obvious in the 1960s. There was a pronounced shift away from schools representing parents. The old Latin in loco parentis was that applied to education. The school is in the place of the parent, and that no longer is the case. Now we're teaching our children to think independently, to replace the values of their parents with secular values, and we see the result. Over the last 50 years, a soaring poverty rate, a national budget that has bankrupted the country, an illiterate populace, an historically ignorant populace. You ever see these man on the street things? Who's the vice president? I have no idea. Tell me something about the Constitution. No idea. An atheistic populace, a populace largely controlled by a government that's no longer accountable to the people. And in the midst of all of this, what's the church doing? Well, the church has morphed into rock concerts and morality plays, businesses and public speaking venues where people are stimulated emotionally and made to think that this is all of God. While they, their families, and their nations have gone to hell in a handbasket, spiritually, morally, academically, financially, pretty much any way you can mention. Today, noted and notable Christian so-called preachers like California Rick Warren are actually plowing the one-world field, employing secular psychological and marketing tactics to lure gullible and needy people into their web. The challenge here in America, look at your Constitution, look at your Bill of Rights. The First Amendment guarantees freedom of speech and religion, but now religion cannot be practiced on many occasions. We now have freedom from religion. Speech may be technically free, but those who say politically incorrect things are ridiculed, called purveyors of hate, excluded from the public discord. Chief among them is academic and government circles. In creating the Second Amendment, the, the founding fathers recognized that as long as there was an armed populace, a government could not arbitrarily force its dictatorial will on the people. Although the right to bear arms was not to be infringed, there are now over 20,000 laws controlling or prohibiting arms. The Fourth Amendment is for all purposes dead. And with the property rights so essential to a stable society, the seizures of property due to a plethora of laws and regulations are commonplace. We have an amendment in the Bill of Rights that says government can't do that. Well, they found a way to do it. The Fifth Amendment, with its protection against double jeopardy, it's coming unglued. The reason for this provision was to prevent government from endless charging and recharging of a person until his resources were exhausted. But now we can be punished for the same crime in several ways at both federal and state levels and by having property seized or by means of other civil procedures. We've just gone around it. The Tenth Amendment? The Tenth Amendment gives powers to the state that are not specifically mentioned in the Constitution. The federal government has entered areas never specifically designated to it. Rather than asserting their legal rights against such things, the states are standing at the trough with their hand out. They want money to build or to expand or to do the things they want to do. And as a result, they are willingly prostituting themselves to the government. Government does not give you money. Federal government does not give you money without strings attached to it. The author of this piece cites three important threats. He talks about international treaties the signing and ratification of international treaties which become law of our land 
are nothing more than end runs around our own Constitution. Most of these treaties originate at the United Nations. Current pending treaties will deed away control of our children, our riverbeds, the oceans, property rights, and many other things. Another threat is regulation. You have probably fallen prey to it on some level or not. Congress has defaulted much of its responsibility for making laws to a fourth branch of government not sanctioned by the Constitution. It's called the bureaucratic branch. Congress passes laws creating agencies, enabling those agencies to create regulations, which are then imposed on the populace with the force of law. As Congress defaults on its responsibilities, the agencies are now acting as unaccountable lawmakers, imposing more and more regulation. Enforcement of these regulations is becoming equally abusive and the process of redress along with it. The Senate's participation is immaterial. Congress is rapidly becoming a useless debating society as it fails to assert its rights as a branch of government. And then there are executive orders. Executive order was the means by which Germany was converted to a republic or from a republic into a Nazi dictatorship in just three months. Executive orders are issued by the president and appear in the federal register for 30 days. If there is no challenge by Congress, the order then becomes law. Where's our Congress when this sort of thing is going on? Similar to executive orders are presidential decision directives, such as the secret PDD number 25, which allows for the use of U.S. troops in U.N. operations without congressional approval in violation of the Constitution. If the president were to declare an emergency for whatever reason, Congress's consent is not required. Executive orders give the government the power to act as an unaccountable dictatorship. In addition, authority does not flow from the president to the governors of the various states during the emergency, but rather through the director of the Federal Emergency Management Agency, you've heard of FEMA, and his regional directors, the states are totally bypassed. Some of those orders have been revised or combined into new, more comprehensive executive orders and memoranda. Executive Order Number 10995 empowers the government to take over all communications, media, radio, television, magazines, etc. CB, ham, rate, shortwave. The First Amendment would be suspended because there's an emergency. Executive Order 997 con it controls all electric power, petroleum, gas, fuels, minerals. 98 controls food, farm production. Uh, the rest control transportation, private automobiles, highways, waterways, railways, airports. Executive Order 11001 allows for the seizure, seizure of health, education, and welfare functions, including hospitals, pharmaceuticals, and schools. A, r a raft of orders provide for the registration and relocation of individuals as the government sees fit, including separation of families based on the perceived needs and dealing with the declared crisis. These orders also provide for the seizure of housing and the establishment of new public housing to accommodate this relocated workforce. All that's necessary is for the President of the United States to declare a state of emergency. So who are you going to vote for this time around? Quo Vadis, America. <laughs>